Four boards, 16 to 7. Joe Gardy can't be happy with his offense. They're making too many mental mistakes. All right, you mentioned big plays. Let's get right to it. Why don't we go with 418 left in the first quarter? I told you about Jason Stahl at the top of the show. We talked about John Hill. Well, how about 85 yards worth of a touchdown, Marty? And as Chris Berman would say on ESPN, he might just go all the way. Look at the speed here. He reads his blockers, goes all the way for an 85-yard touchdown. One big play for Butler. Extra point was good, 7-0 in favor of the Bulldogs. Now, 12.54, early second quarter. Hofstra gets right back in this one. George Beisel finds Robert Grogan from six yards out. We're tied at seven. Well, it's the same play the first time he, uh, George Beisel doesn't take the five-step drop. This time, Grogan finds the end zone, gets wide open for the touchdown. George Beisel, Marty, gets in trouble here. He was called for an intentional ground, and he was also called for the safety, 9-7. But, Carl, this play was actually set up on the first two offensive plays that Hofstra ran that series. Two running plays when they were already backed up. They had the momentum. They let it slip away. 23 seconds left in the first half. Stahl finds Travis Dixon. Hofstra got caught coming on the blitz. Right. Play action. Here comes Joey Driver on the blitz. Dixon wide open for a touchdown. Three big plays to one. And you mentioned the big plays, you mentioned the mental mistakes. How does the team overcome that? Well, I think like Joe Gardy said, to be honest with you, they missed that spring practice. They need to get out there and work with these young players, develop them. I think there was a little jitters in the first half. Joe has got to make them realize, guys, we're still in this game. We helped them score. Let's go out, take control, and let's play a better second half. All right, back with more from Hofstra Stadium, Hempstead, New York, right after this. beautiful garden in his memory. His mother and father are here along with his sister. It was quite a moving ceremony. And just a great tribute to a young individual that had a tragedy that took his life and what Joe Gardy and the university did to remember him is just a, a class act. All right, we're getting ready for the start of the second half. Hofstra, which won the toss and deferred to start the game. We'll get the kickoff here, Marty, and uh, they hope to play a less mistakes uh, in the second half if they're going to get back in the game. And hopefully they'll get a big play here. Dante Gillum at the 11-yard line. Reversing the ball to Joey Driver. Driver trying to turn it outside. Got a block from Wayne Crebet. Driver stepping out of bounds, however, at around the 18-yard line. So a little razzle-dazzle off the kickoff. And you can see why Joe Gardy loves this guy on defense. He's a, a converted running back with the ability to come in and make big plays. All right, Marty, let's take a look at the halftime stats. Both teams passed the ball well. Of course, Butler ran the ball much more than Hofstra. What do you see in the numbers? I think the big thing that sticks out is penalties. Hofstra 7 for 50 yards, Butler 5 for 43. The big thing is those 50 yards were very costly. No question about it. Mistakes killed Hofstra that first half. The safety resulting in uh, the two points. And looks like Hofstra is going to be penalized off the kickoff here. Another one of those mistakes. Illegal block on the back on the run back. About. Another Part of the return team. Illegal block. the distance to the goal line. First down. And watch right here. Watch number one, Jeff Piketty, coming in right. No, we won't see it. I don't think that it was on Corbett. It was on either Corbett or Jeff Piketty. Both of them, you've got to get a clean shot. You can't take a chance of hitting the guy in the shoulder. Liza with time, throwing low. And at the 20-yard line, Michael Wright making the catch. That's the third catch of the night for Michael Wright. Kenny Cologne caught four passes. Looks like they're coming out very quickly like they did with a two-minute uh, drill to start the second half as they did the first half more. Well, the one thing they want to do is they want to catch Butler with either 12 men or not the proper defensive alignment. Now they line up with two wide receivers at the bottom of your screen. Beisel looking, unloading wide open the receiver, but it's picked off by Shane Greer. Greer still with the ball, still on his feet, inside the 25 to 20, and downed it around the 12-yard line by Robert Grogan. And two things happened right there. George Bizo had an open receiver. The ball's a little bit underthrown, but Greer, excellent position, catches the ball, and now puts Butler in a golden opportunity to jump out there right inside the 15-yard line. Rafael Morales, the intended receiver. Well, here it all starts. He's got his receivers running out. George Bizo's out there. He's got a receiver. The ball's a little bit underthrown. There's Greer. He takes it. And watch what he does after he catches the ball, Barry. He keeps the hit, keeps the balance, takes it back inside the 15. First interception thrown by Beisel. He was uh, 13 for 21 before that. 
On first down, they try the right side of the line. Johnson stopped after a short gain. Irv Adamas on the tackle. Well, if there's one guy that's not going to quit, that's number 56. Herve Adamas will hit you all game. Pre-game warm-ups, post-game warm-ups, this guy wants to win. Now Steve Ewell checks in the lineup at the fullback spot. He'll work with uh, Richie Johnson, 38, as the tailback. Boss and Hill line up flankers wide to the left. And a uh, inside handoff to the fullback. And Ewell cracks inside the... Uh, 10-yard line to around the nine, stopped by Fritzy Avon, the senior from St. Francis Prep out of Cambria Heights, setting up a third down play. Vinny Paisano also helping out on the play. And Vinny Paisano is doing an excellent job. That six foot, 300 pounds, he's really clogging up the middle. They're going to have to run his ball outside the cock. Third and seven, let's call it. Third and six and a half. There's the man of the hour, right for being obscured by big number 90. There is Shane Greer. Stall throwing to the fullback and good work in the, by the defense, stopping it around the seven yard line. Getting over quickly, Dante Gillum and Peter Scheibe. Uh, Steve Ewell coming out of the backfield caught that short pass. And when you talk to Greg Gigantino, the defense coordinator, he was afraid when Jason Stahl got outside of the pocket. Right there, the mobility to find the receiver leaves them in the fourth and one situation. They're bringing in their place kicker. Well, you saw Kelly Shank one earlier in a field goal attempt in the first half. And they will try this one from about the 12-yard line. It'll be a 22-yard kick. Remember, the hash marks have been moved in. This is a better angle right now. Kelly's kick is up, and the kick is good. So Kelly kicks a 22-yard field goal, and Butler takes advantage of the mistake early and puts three points on the board to up their lead down to 19-7. to Well, now Butler can be a little bit more conservative. They have a 12-point lead. Officers got to come out. They've got to get that offense going. They've got to get some points on the board. It's homecoming. If you look at the statistics, they've won their last 13 home openers. They want to keep that tradition going. Look for Joe Gardy. Does it remain calm? George Bison, go out there, take control. There's plenty of time left. Now, Marty, if you recall, Dayton snapped a 24-game home regular season winning streak back here in the last home game in 1992. Hopch has been nearly invincible here at home since 1980. 61 and six in regular season play. But season openers are 13 and 17 out of their last 18. That's great tradition here. Well, the Butler plays tough football. They'll play at a conference this year with Dayton, Valparaiso, San Diego, Drake. Their non-scholarship program, and as we mentioned earlier, many of the Division three and two teams who play Division one basketball all forced this year to move up to one double A. Some playing with some scholarships, some with not, but pretty good football nevertheless. Bacchetti and Gillum will be back to receive the kick. White booming this one down, and Gillum will fumble it, pick it up. He's to the 15 20 and upended as he crossed the 20 to around the 24 yard line. And as he was brought down on the play by Steve Ewell, the fullback, Donnie Gillum gives Hofstra first and ten. And it didn't take long. Three plays, 13 yards under a minute. After the turnover by Hofstra on the interception. And the flying Dutchman, George Beisel, trying to get the run and shoot to fire some bullets here. Looking. Has time, dumping it out. Michael Wright sheds one tackler. And he'll pick up about six yards as he gets to the 31-yard line. Pick up of uh, maybe seven. Setting up a second down play. Dave Kathman, we haven't mentioned his name too much tonight, but he and the Matt Kistler, both linebackers on the play. McKinney is the super back right now. Grogan lining up wide to the right. He has four catches in the game. Good first half for Grogan and Cologne. Grogan with the only touchdown. Three wide receivers to the right. Faisal looking that way. Now throwing up the middle, complete to Morales for the first down across the 35. At the 36-yard line, Shane Greer, who had that big interception earlier on the tackle. Pressure put on by Dan Banjo. And that's the one thing George Faisal has to do right now. Be patient. 
take what these uh, what the Bulldogs defense gives you. Don't go for the big one. Don't make a mistake. Just dink them here and dink them there, and then look for the big one. When it's there, take it. Defense has switched to a 4-4-3 right now. Faisal looking, overthrows the intended receiver. Grogan catches it. He was looking initially for number 89. It was wide open, Rafael Morales, but a heady play by Grogan, who came up with the football. And we talk about concentration right there. Grogan's out there. He's in the right position. Morales misses it. Grogan takes advantage of the tip. Grogan uh, with the receptions now, 34 yards, including the touchdown, and picks up a big first out. Hops just crossed over midfield here. Owen Gardner, the center, along with Joe Yanis and Tom McCann, the guard, Steve Shamella and Dave Fiore, the tackles. Faisal with protection, going sideline, Morales wide open, bounces off McDaniel and driven out of bounds. Boy, McDaniels had his hands full with the Hofstra receivers tonight. And Morales came down there with a head of speed, took time to catch the ball, took an excellent blow by McDaniels, kept his feet, picked up another 10-yard, 24-yard pickup. There it is. It's a down and out. He's wide open. Look at the hit by McDaniels. Bounces off him, picks up another seven yards. Excellent concentration, excellent play. Morales has caught three passes for 35 yards. George Beisel has his club at the 25 at first and 10, trailing 19 to 7. He's got Grogan again. Boy, Grogan showing the good hands. He doesn't drop the football. Picks up about five on that play. It'll be second and five. Well, you like seeing the leadership in George Beisel, what he's doing. He's going to his left. He's going to his right. He's taking the 10 yarders. He's going to the flats. An excellent concentration this drive by his receivers. Faisal now 19 for 28, 237 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Second and five at the 20. Triple wide receivers to the right side. Screening it. Bicchetti had trouble, finally caught it. Bicchetti down the sideline. Dive for the end zone. And they say that he went out of bounds at around the two or three yard line. Boy, Bikini bobbled that screen. Looked like it might pop into the hands of a Butler Bulldog, but he got the handle and he was off to the race. And his second and third effort. Right here, the Bulldogs are coming with an all out blitz. They stop. Right there, you got to keep that momentum going, but look at the effort here on Bacchetti. He's outside, he steps out of bounds on the three, but dies for the end zone, his first and goal. 42, Matt Kessler had a chance to wrap him up initially when he bobbled the ball, and he broke free. Now flags thrown all over the place. I think they had too many men on the field, perhaps, Butler. There's a player heading off right now. They're counting the numbers up right now. 12 a dead ball foul, a substitution infraction. On the defense, hop the distance to the goal, first down. Well, that Hofstra will take. And take it kindly right here as the ball moved half the distance, maybe to the one and a half yard line, Marty. Now let's see if they go to that jumbo offense that they have talked about where they'll put in some of the defensive players here. Right now they're not. You now they've worked on that during practice. George Beisel with just the single back, Piketty. Faisal looking to air it out, throwing incomplete as he drew into the end zone. Shane Greer on the coverage, and Morales was the intended receiver. So they'll go second and goal from about the one and a half yard line. And again, throw the football here. And right here we have a second and one, second and one and a half. He's got a back back there with Jeff Piketty's ability, his second and third effort. I'd give it to him and try to have him punch it over once or twice. Hofstra trailing 19 to seven. They try Piketty, but he is wrapped up in the backfield. As number 44 got a piece of him and wouldn't let him go, Brian Sanders, the 6'1", 240-pound senior. Well, you can give the ball to Jeff Piketty, and he can get those one and two yard gains, but you have to have the proper protection. Watch Sanders come right inside the offensive lineman. Just an easy slant. Nobody picks him up. Throws him for a one-yard loss. So it's third and goal from about the two-and-a-half-yard line. Michael Wright goes in motion. Looking that way, throwing, and it is going to be intercepted at the two-yard line. Chapman 
with the interception and down as he got to the 28-yard line. So the All-American linebacker, Dave Kaplan, picking the ball up and racing it backfield. And I want you to watch his whole play, the determination by Kaplan. What he does to George Beisel at the end of the play. George Beisel makes a poor decision right here. Kathman in the right place. Watch Kathman goes up. George is going to pump. He throws it. Kathman catches. But watch the entire play, Barry. This is why this guy is an All-American. Watch him run and watch George Beiser with the stiff arm right there. You've got to love that type of determination. No question about it. Stall back to throw. Looking deep. Trying to burn him. Ty Sunday goes up and knocks the pass down. Intended for Eric Voss. And Ty Sunday, the good-looking sophomore from Tampa, Florida, made a fine defensive play. Well, the one thing Ty Sunday did was he didn't let the receiver get behind him. He played the ball. He went up and knocked it down. As we look at the interception again, look at George Basel. He's got plenty of time. He doesn't even see Kathman there. But look at the catch. The determination brings it out. And this is what I like. You, you don't get very many opportunities to hit the quarterback and get away with it. When you get it, take advantage of now the clock stopped the official stopping the clock let's go to Carl Reuter on the field Barry remember the top of the telecast when we talked about discipline on how Butler will not beat themselves well part of that discipline comes right here from the Bulldog sidelines whether it be the offensive unit or defensive unit when they come off the field and they talk to coach Ken LaRose the issues are addressed at the end of that conference conversation the players look at the coach and they answer him and they say yes sir that is discipline. They do not beat themselves, the Butler Bulldogs. Well, we have seen that tonight, and one of the reasons uh, why they uh, are rated uh, among the 1AA non-scholarship teams as uh, a team that's going to be right up among the best in the country, and there's one reason why the 210. But he was an all-conference uh, defensive end. They moved him to linebacker last year, led the team in tackle. As we take a look at the Hofstra schedule, next week they'll play at Rhode Island. And then, of course, we'll rejoin them on the telecast schedule here on Sports Channel, taking on Lehigh. Lehigh played this afternoon, and they were uh, soundly beaten by uh, an excellent uh, Delaware team. And we'll have uh, the other games coming your way. Illinois State, as they come back home, will be here on the 25th. And a very extensive Hofstra schedule coming your way at all of the games except for next week's game right here on Sports Channel. Second and 10 from the 27th. Stahl looking for Voss, and pass interference will be called on Scheibe, I believe. No, check that. It'll uh, be on a, another Hofstra defender, and it's on the rookie Brown, Alvon Brown, the freshman, number 37. Trying to wrap up the tough receiver, Eric Voss. Voss has caught only one pass today. Pass interference on the defense. Spot foul. First down. One of the rule changes, Marty, who haven't seen it to call today, is an offensive pass interference. Uh, you've uh, lost a down before in college football. This year, uh, you don't lose a down. You lose, of course, the yardage on the play. I think that's a, uh, an issue that everyone wanted to address. Right there, you see Vaughn. You see what Joe Gordy is trying to do. If these players make an aggressive mistake, he's still going to take them out, let them think about it. Fine catch by Voss, has the first down, as you saw his leaping ability. Out fought the Hofstra defender for the ball and picked up the first down. That was a question that Joe kept saying, point of attack, can our little quarterbacks at 5'8", five, 5'9", five, the Shibes and Shanahan's go up against taller defenders and uh, stop them. However, there is a penalty on the play and it appears to be against the Bulldogs. That'll bring the play back. Marty, you've played, uh, you've seen that in football. Can a smaller, tougher cornerback uh, battle against the really outstanding receivers? Is it too much to give up in terms of size and well, talent? Right now, you take a guy like James Hasty for the New York Jets. Very aggressive, undersized. Holding on the offense. Ten yards, spot of the foul, repeat first down. But probably one of the most feared cornerbacks in the NFL. Well respected. I think if you're mentally into the game and you're aggressive, you can always make up for the lack of size. You have to have the heart to go out there and compete. Well, Shanahan and Shibe, no question to have the heart. And uh, Hofstra hopes that they will get better as the season wears on. Right now, Ty Sunday in his a nickel situation. First and long yards, another flag as we're being hit by those yellow Yankees here in the third quarter. 
stopping play with 8.33 to go. And referee Arthur Bellows, busy man right now. Irving Damas is over there. Dead ball foul. False start on the offense. Repeat first down. Now, first game problems for Butler here as well. As we mentioned, a team that doesn't generally beat themselves. They haven't let these mistakes hurt them yet. And Barry, this is an interesting call. What would you call on first and 35? A draw play, maybe. <laughs> How about that? They've got Hill standing uh, to the near side, wide to the left. Johnson in the end zone. And they will go to Johnson on the draw play. And Johnson will cross the 10 up to the 12-yard line. Stopped by Hervé Damas, but picked up about eight yards. Gave him a little breathing room. And uh, coach agreed with my call over there, Kenny LaRose. Well, the next week, Barry, I think if you continue that, maybe you'll be on headsets with Joe Gordy. Well, we'll get a shot at that maybe later on. That wouldn't be a bad idea. Well, I think what they wanted to do was just get the ball out where they can deal with second and 25, second and 28. Uh, they've got three downs. Why waste one down to pick up the whole 35? Let's take our time. This is a team that doesn't turn the ball over. Didn't turn it over. Only seven interceptions last year for this quarterback. They'll stay on the ground. And Hofstra will get the ball. And a very short pickup there for the big uh, fullback, Steve Ewell. Vinny Paisano on the tackle. Well, you talk about big hearts. You look at Vinny Paisano and you look at uh, Mike Gifford. One's 5'11", 290. The other one's 6 feet. 300 pounds. They play with hard, Barry. They're strong, competitive people, and they've been doing an excellent job clogging up the middle. Well, we've got third and 30 from the 10-yard line. What Saul doesn't want to do is give Hostia the ball down here. See if he stays on the ground. It takes a short pass. The pitches to Johnson. Johnson runs into a couple of tacklers, crosses the 15 to the 16. Joey Driver coming up for a pop. Young man out of Long Beach. And the punting team coming on right now for the Dayton Flyers. They've had only to punt three times. And uh, Ronnie White is average close to 37. There's a look at White. Big boy at around six feet three. Those kick from around the seven yard line. But well, Hofstra needs something here, but Kenny's standing back at around midfield. They need a big play here. But Kenny will field it at the 45. A lot of white shirts there. He tries to reverse his field. Finds a little bit of an opening. Gets about six yards back as he crosses midfield to the 49-yard line. 38-yard punt, six-yard return. We'll be back. Hofstra trails at 19-7. 6 to go here in the third quarter. Nestled in a woodland hideaway. The Fumble. He'll follow that with the 85-yard touchdown pass. And then uh, Beisel's interception set up the field goal. Well, I don't think that it's time to panic. George Beisel's been doing an excellent job out there. He's made two poor decisions. Both resulted in interceptions. But he's got plenty of time to redeem himself. 6.17 to go here in the third quarter. Beisel will be sacked. There's a flag on the play at the 45-yard line. Maybe a face mask. Chris Toner. Well, they just may mark the ball there. We saw a hanky go down there. Chris Tona blowing in from his uh, end position. That's his second sack of the night. And you see George Beisel right there talking to his, uh, his back, telling Grogan, you have got to protect me. This guy came from my blind side. I'm not going to be in the game much longer. I can't take hits like that. Protect me. I'll get the ball to you. Michael Wright in at the super back spot right now. Kenny Cologne wide to the left. And they've got a triple set to the right. Second and 16. Time running out. They don't get the playoff. And that is the first time that's happened tonight. Well, Barry, that's going to happen. After your quarterback takes a hit like that and has to pick himself up off the ground, walk over there to his offensive lineman, walk out to the receivers and say, guys, protect me. I need the time to get you the ball. That takes five, ten seconds off the clock. Well, Hofstra, you remember, gave up 53 sacks last year, averaging over five a game. They've given up four tonight. Faisal, the pitch, and it could not be handled by Wright. He'll fall on it at the 41-yard line, setting up third and about 19. Well, Michael Wright, who worked on his hands, couldn't hang on to the pitch as they tried a running play to kind of change the pace there, try to fool the defense. But and with Michael Wright's speed, he had 10 free yards, and then he could, no telling what he could have done. He's got to catch the ball before you look downfield. Well, 
third and about 20. They've got to get inside the 40. Faisal pressured by Rosevich, throwing for Grogan. As he went up, he couldn't get it. Greer was there. He had an interception earlier. And it'll set up a punting situation for the Flying Dutchman. But right there, you can see that George Faisal, every time he gets hit, Right there, the ball floated out. It didn't have the same kind of zip that George is used to in the first quarter. Eric Cross, the freshman, to punt for the, only the third time. He's been one of the bright spots tonight, averaging 46 yards on a pair of kicks. Foss standing back inside the 20. Austria trailing 19 to seven. Good kick. Voss will take it at the 19-yard line and take it down. Excellent coverage uh, by Hofstra once again. Jeff Piketty was down there real quick, along with Patrick Clark, number 49. That's one of the things that's improved uh, we've watched tonight, the coverage, the kick coverage by Hofstra, and the kicking unit uh, has been outstanding. Well, the one thing that worried Joe Gardy coming into tonight's game was the performance of the special team. Right there, a 42-yard punt, uh, no net return, excellent field position now. He's got to rely on his defense. The defense has to say, we've got to score. The offense is starting to putter a little bit. Well, you can expect them to keep it on the ground, eat up some time. They go to Johnson, and Johnson stopped as he got to the 20-yard line. It'll be a second and uh, nine play. Vinny Paisano and Hervé Damas on the play. Clock ticking with 4.20 to go. Johnson has rushed for 75 yards and 20 carries. Last year, they went to, to the tailback almost exclusively. He was a fullback blocked for the tailback. Their tailback uh, ran the ball 275 times, 27 carries a game. Second and nine, stall straight back. Drills it in there for Hill, and Hill makes a fine reception up at the 30-yard line. You can see the zip on the ball right there. And Rocco Sadler on the tackle. Fifth reception for Hill. He's well over 100 yards. And Stahl, all he's been doing is getting the protection. He's going back. And the secondary of Holster, they're, they're so young, they're so inexperienced, they're leaving too much cushion for a guy like Hill, for a guy like Voss. They're finding those dead zones, and they're picking up big chunks of yardage. Hill with five catches, 125 yards, including that 85-yard touchdown. And out of the eye, here's Johnson behind uh, the fullback, and he drives for about eight off the right side of the line. Good block by Mark Villani, the lead block, the fullback. Finally, Joey Driver stopped him, but an eight-yard pickup for Richie Johnson, and this game uh, on the verge of uh, really getting away from Hofstra as they trail by 12 with 3.12 to go here in this third quarter. Well, the one thing we'll find out is which team is in better conditions because right now, the offense of Butler, they've taken over the game. Time of possession is well in their favor. And this defensive officer, they've been out there a long time tonight. Good legging, little play action. Again, throwing complete. And uh, complete for good yardage. Peter Scheibe on the tackle, but not before they picked up another first down. And uh, this time, uh, number 39, the fullback, Steve Ewell on the receiving end, his second catch. Stahl having a good evening, 14 for 19, 211 yards, two touchdowns. As we mentioned, Marty, he doesn't make mistakes. Only seven interceptions all of last year. They haven't had a turnover tonight. Well, they're very patient. They're taking what the Flying Dutchman's defense is giving them. Hofstra now coming with a five-man front. To the fullback. And he's hit hard, uh, Bellani, by Irve Damas. There have been some bright notes defensively for Hofstra. Irve has had a good ball game. The transfer from Lehigh, he'll be going up against his former school in a couple of weeks. We'll have that game for you on Sports Channel. Well, you can see Irve, he's trying to get the whole defense, trying to get the offense fired up. Let's listen to this hit. <laughs> Marty Lyons got a hit, folks. Second and seven from the 48. Stall with time. Going for the sideline. Oh, Peter Scheibe trying to pick it off. Voss was the intended receiver. Vinny Paisano surprisingly putting some pressure on the quarterback there. Well, that was the whole key right there. I think that's the first or second time tonight that Stahl went back and felt pressure. He had plenty of time, didn't find the receivers. The secondary did an excellent time. 
And then you've got Vinny Pisano coming in there and throwing all 300 pounds on top of him. Third and seven from the 48-yard line. Voss and Gribbins line up wide to the right. Hill, a flanker to the right side. Three wide receivers that way. So looking there, and Hill makes a fine catch, but it'll be shy of the first down at the 48-yard line. Joey Driver out of his linebacker spot on the coverage. Short of the first down, they'll set up a possible punting situation. Joey Driver has been on uh, quite a few plays. Now, here's a guy that is a converted running back that won a starting position as an outside linebacker, being everywhere, Barry. Ron White to punt. He's punted four times, averaging 37. Bucchetti will watch this one go over his head. And will it get into the end zone? No, it took a bounce back. Kathman downing the ball at the two or three yard line. A 46 yard kick and Hofstra finds themselves now 97 yards away from pay dirt. And Jeff Bucchetti did the right thing. You, you never field the ball inside the 10 on an artificial turf. Just a bad bounce for Joe Gardy and his troops right now. He's under uh, two minutes left in the third quarter. They've got a long way to go, but a lot of time left. Remember, they're only 12 points down. Yeah, George Beisel's been in there all the way. Michael Wright now in the ball game as the super back. Wayne Krebet is in the ball game with Grogan and Morales. They line up wide to the right as they go with a triple set to the right. Beisel with time. Now throwing up field, it is going to be complete at the 21-yard line. Fine reception that time by Kenny Cologne, and he has looked awfully good. That's his fifth catch of the night. And George Beisel has thrown to Kenny Cologne five times tonight. Kenny Cologne has caught five, pound, five times for well over 100 yards, 108 to be exact. Good numbers, Marty. And with under a minute to go, Hofstra has gotten away from the goal line. They're up at the 30-yard line. Geisel again with time, throwing it is knocked down on a flying play by the cornerback Larry Winters, number 22. But what George Beisel is doing right now, he's building a relationship with Kenny Cologne. He's showing confidence. He's telling Kenny, go ahead, beat your defenders. I'm going to get you the ball. But the one thing George has to remember, he's got four other receivers he has to give a look to. Michael Wright in the ball game in the backfield right now. Jeff Piketty on the sideline. Faisal looking, throwing complete again, and he's got close to the first down, has the first down at the 45-yard line. Rafael Morales with the catch. Well, right there, he's got Kenny Colon out to his left. He's got three receivers down to the right. Morales runs the end. He's wide open, finds the dead spot. Another first down. The momentum's starting to pick up. We're late in the third quarter. Morales, four catches for 60 yards. We know Hofstra's history of being a fourth-quarter club. And They'll have to do that tonight in order to win this game. Right now they trail by 12, 19 to 7. Faisal screening to Michael Wright, gets the block, has the first down inside the 40-yard line. Michael Wright almost breaking loose there. Cameron McDaniel and Shane Greer combining on the stop. I think when you have Michael Wright back there, you should just say scat back because when he catches the ball, he can motor. Watch this, it's just a quick screen, and watch how quick this young man is. He picks up 5'10", jumps for another five. There's a 15-yard gain. Couldn't pick up the number, but he got a couple of nice blocks there to spring it, Marty. So the ball at the 40-yard line, 15 seconds to go in this third quarter. Remember, George Beisel was down at the goal line. They had first and a yard and a half to go and could not put it in. Beisel, 23 for 36 for over 300 yards, but two costly interceptions and the one touchdown. Sideline pattern, Morales has it. Out of bounds, it's going to be incomplete. He had the first down, had they ruled it complete. Cameron McDaniel was on the sideline. Well, they're saying Morales didn't have control of the ball when he went out of bounds. I think it's a good call. He was still juggling it, and there's the end of the third quarter. So the Flying Dutchman, after three, find themselves down 19-7. We'll be back with fourth quarter action in just a moment. 